Hi everyone, my name is Chris Hardwick and I'm a former world record holder and US national champion in speed solving the 4x4 and a former world champion and world record holder in blindfold solving the 4x4. And I used to be a teacher so I very much enjoy teaching Rubik's Cube concepts and one thing I want to go over today is the uh, 4x4 orientation parity case. And this video is intended for beginners. If you're learning how to solve the 4x4 or if you are the type of person that just wants to know a little bit more about how and why this orientation case comes up, this is the video for you. So essentially, what I want to talk about real quick is if you're learning to solve the 4x4, you probably run into the case where after you make your 4x4 look like a 3x3 and try to solve it like a 3x3, you end up with one edge at the end that's flipped, uh, or it sort of looks like there's just one edge here that's flipped. And this is not a possible case on a three by three. So you end up with, you need a special, usually very long algorithm that's, that fixes this case. And the problem is that algorithm is often very hard to memorize and it's not that intuitive. And there's just, it's sort of like a difficult point in trying to learn to solve the four by four. So what I want to do today is show you a much more intuitive way to fix this case. And um, the idea, the way to do that is to just understand a little bit about what this case is, like what's happening here. So the first thing to notice is on the 4x4, there are actually 24 of these wing edges. They're called wings. And when you have a large number of pieces on the cube that all have di you know different sticker combinations, they can all go in the position of any other one, then you have a concept called permutation parity. So when we talk about parity, you'll, you'll usually hear people call this case, oh, you have orientation parity, you have parity. Parity is kind of a misnomer. What this actually is, is it's called odd permutation parity. And the way permutation parity works is if I were to take a, uh, let me take, do this on a solved cube real quick to help make this a little bit easier. So this is just a regular solved four by four. If I take one of these inner slices and I turn it one quarter turn, you I just let's just look at the edges for a second so we'll get to the centers in a second but notice the edges i had my green white edge which started here and i moved it back and then the blue white edge which was here i moved it back the blue yellow edge which was right there i moved it back and the green yellow that was there i moved it up or like sort of back like that so i've just sort of if you look at it from this side i've moved those four wing edges in kind of a ring here so i, I sent this one there that one there that one there and that one up and when you move four or really an even number of pieces in a cycle like that or in a ring where like one goes to the next, goes to the next, goes to the next, goes back to the start, it, it's, it seems a little unintuitive, but if you move an even number of pieces in a, in a cycle like that, you have done something that's called an odd parity permutation, or you've created, in this case, odd permutation parity. So what, what's really another way to think about it is uh, permutation parity is talking about the number of swaps that you need to do of two pieces to bring the cube back to solve. So I need to swap these two pieces. So if I move this up, there's really a piece here and there's a piece here. Both of those are green white pieces. And so this is not really that I have a flipped edge. It looks like a flipped edge, but what's actually happening on the four by four is that this piece and that piece need to swap positions with each other. And if you have to do one swap, then of two pieces. So if you have to swap this, that's a one swap, and that creates, that's an odd permutation parity situation. If I have to do an even number of swaps, that's an even parity situation, even permutation parity. So what we're gonna do, in order to sort of teach you how to solve parity, it makes sense to show you how to create it. So I'm gonna start with the solved cube. This is completely solved. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make parity on this cube. And the way to do that is first, I have to create odd permutation parity. And I'm gonna do that by cycling those four edges in a ring like this. So I've done a four swap of edges, that one to there, to there, to there, and back. Four edges creates odd permutation parity. But the problem is I can't see that right now. So if I were to try to solve all of my edges and fix all these centers, then you would actually be able to see a flipped edge, but I don't see that right now. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna use a special type of move, like a special type of sequence, that's gonna move these centers back to their original locations in a way that preserves the permutation parity. So I'm not actually gonna change the fact that I have parity, but I'm gonna to start to move pieces around to make it easier to see. Now, you don't need to know the particular moves that I'm doing right now. I just wanna show you that basically, so I've fixed green and white, now let's fix uh, blue and yellow here. If 
Okay, so blue and yellow are back. So notice that my centers are good again, except now uh, I still have my wing edges are off. And they're, notice they're all cycled up. So like this one got sent back, which got sent back, which got sent back, which got sent back. But what I'm gonna do now to make this uh, something we can see is I'm actually gonna move the edges back. So I'm gonna move this one there and then that one up there. Okay, so I'm starting to move my edges back and I get down to these last ones. And what I'm gonna do for you to see this is I'm gonna move this edge down, that edge up, and that edge over. Okay, so. And notice, voila, we create parity. So I've actually made the parity case happen. And the way I did that was I first created odd permutation parity. And then I just kind of moved all the pieces back to where they're supposed to go. Okay, so that's all well and good. That's great. But how is that helpful? If you are in a real solve and you see that you have parity, how do you fix it? So now let's go through, now that we sort of know why parity comes about, how you make it, now let's go over how to fix it. So when you want to fix parity, what we're going to do is we're going to first create, we, we're, we're in an odd permutation parity situation. We have parity. In order to toggle parity off, or, or more precisely to change odd permutation parity into even permutation parity, which means you can solve it normally, what I need to do is I need to do one inner quarter turn like that. Or more precisely, I need to do an odd number of these inner quarter turns. If I can do an odd number of these inner quarter turns, I'll toggle the parity case off. And then when I try to solve my edges, everything's gonna work correctly. Okay, now the way we're gonna do that, we're gonna do this kind of intuitively. Uh, it's gonna be a little, it, it's a little, looks a little strange at first, but then it kind of makes sense. So what I want you to look at are on this right side here, we're only gonna look at these centers. So we're gonna pay attention to the centers only on this right side. And we're going to look at this left block of centers on the top face also. So the left block is sort of like where we're going to store centers. And the right block is where we're going to be moving centers around. So what I want to do is I want to take the block that's in my storage spot, which is white, and I want to move it into the place of where these greens are on the next part of this, uh, of this right, sli uh, right side slice. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to bring this side up and then I'm going to turn the top twice to put the white in the place of where the greens were. So notice now the whites are now where the greens started and the greens got put into the storage spot. And now I'm going to just sort of continue that idea around. I'm going to take these greens and I'm going to put them in the place of this yellow, this yellow block. And if you notice, after greens come yellow. So I'm just sort of saying, I'm kind of each block of centers is going to bump out the blocks of the next color going around. And the way to do that is to copy the same way we did before. I'm going to bring this block up. I'm going to take the greens on the top, turn it twice, and now the greens are in the place that the yellow started. And the yellows got moved into the storage space on the left. And now I'm going to say, okay, well, I'm going to have to put these yellows into the place where these blues are. And notice after yellows comes blue. So I'm going to say, okay, let's put the yellows and put them into the place where the blues are. So bring the blues up, bring the yellows around into the place where the blues were, and that at the same time puts the blues in the storage spot. The last thing I want to do is I want to take these blues and put them where these whites are. So notice after blue comes what, and it's a little bit harder to see here, but this is the white side. This is where the side pieces started to be white. So we're back to the top here. I'm gonna take these blues and put them where the whites were. So, okay, I'm gonna bring the whites up. I'm gonna turn the top twice to put the blues over. Now I've cycled all of my centers in a ring. The ones that were here went there, went there, went there, and then went back. So this very last turn that I'm gonna do is gonna line the centers up again but it's also the last odd number of turns to fix the center. So uh, what I've done is I've sort of messed up the centers and then put them back, but I did that using an odd number of these inner quarter turns. And what that did is it toggled off the parity. I now have even permutation parity. That means if I try to solve these edges, the cube will actually solve normally. So in a real solve, what you would do is you would go back in your four by four solution method to the step where you solve edges and you would, uh, you would just kind of go through and solve edges. But the problem is, of course, you're gonna mess up all of this sort of solved stuff on your three by three. That's the, that's the problem with this. It is intuitive, so it's easy to remember what to do, but the downside is you, you're gonna mess up your stuff and go back to your edges step, and then you have to solve it like a three by three all over from the start. But this time, when you solve it like a three by three, it will work correctly. So let's go over that and let's do a quick review here. So I have parity, so what do you do? I see that I have parity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to just let's just go through the moves here. So I'm going to do that cycle of centers by going up twice, up twice, 
up twice, up twice, up. And it turns out that that did an odd number of those inner slice quarter turns. So now, just to show you, I'm going to use those same sort of special kinds of moves that preserve the permutation parity and put the centers back. And you'll see this time it'll actually end up solved. So I'll say, okay, so that what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, this one has to go here, which is going to go there. So, okay, so let's see, that goes there. Okay, so I'm starting to put some of these edges back. This one goes here, which goes there. And notice I was able to solve it without having, it's like I don't have parity anymore. So that's the idea for parity. So if you run into a parity case, do that special sequence of turns where you go up twice and just keep repeating until your centers are solved. And this time, when you go through and solve your three by three edges and then solve it like a three by three again, or when you solve these edge blocks together and then solve the whole cube like a three by three, this time it will actually work. Um, so again, it's, it, it's a little bit slower of a way to fix the parity case, but it makes a whole lot more sense and it's a lot easier to remember. Okay, I hope that helps. Thanks very much for watching.